Welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and today I am sharing with you how to crochet the bobbly hot water bottle cover. Before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell so you never miss out another one of my crochet patterns or tutorials again. So the materials that we're going to be using today is some paint box yarns Simply Chunky. This is a size 5 yarn that is 100% acrylic. Because obviously hot water bottles are reasonably warm, not boiling water remember, they're just warm water, you can use an acrylic yarn for this. Now this shade number is 353, which I think, I don't know what shade, I don't know what shade this is, I can't remember, it's one of my favourites and I use it all, used to use it an awful lot. But this is actually the last two balls in my stash, so I'm going to use them up for this pattern tutorial today and I'm just working in one solid colour. In the description box you'll find a link to the written pattern and in there I've put photos of how my testers worked up various different colourways in this pattern to give you some more pattern and colour inspiration. So alongside our size 5 yarn we're going to be using a, well my recommended hook size is a 6mm crochet hook so I'm using this one. Of course I have a darning needle and a pair of scissors because this pattern is worked in four different parts. We're going to start by working the front portion of this hot water bottle cover. There's also a back edge and a front edge. Once they've all been seamed together or crocheted together in this case, we're then going to add some ribbing to cover the top of our hot water bottle. If you already have a hot water bottle that you're going to be using this for, have it to hand so you can check the sizing against, these, um, against the panels that you're making. So gather your materials and let's get started. So we begin by making a slip knot and placing that onto our hook and we're going to make a chain of 24. So we're just yarning over and pulling through 24 times and 24. We're going to start by working one US single crochet, which is the same as a UK double crochet, into that second chain from hook. This loop on our hook does not count. There's our first chain and we're going to go underneath the top loop of our second chain, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through two. We're going to work one single crochet into each chain across, just working underneath that top loop of our chain because we're going to use the other side of our chain to join all of the panels together. Continue to work across for the remainder of row one, working one single crochet into each stitch, or oh no, each chain across. At the end of row one, you should have a stitch count of 23 single crochets. Going straight into row two, we're going to make our turning chain of one and then into that first stitch, we're going to work one single crochet. We're then going to begin our berry stitches, which is the special stitch in this pattern. And it's worked kind of like working two extended half double crochets together. That might be more confusing than me just showing you how to work it. We start by yarning over our hook and inserting our hook into that next stitch, yarn over to bring up a third loop, yarn over, pull through that first loop. We yarn over again and reinsert into the same stitch, yarn over to bring up a fifth loop. Once again, we're gonna yarn over and just pull through that first loop on our hook so that we have five loops. Finally, we yarn over, I'm gonna pull down a little bit to create a bit of space, and bring our hook through all five loops. We then make a chain of one to close that stitch. This chain one here does not count. So I'm just gonna point out the difference. You've got the top of your berry here, and that's your chain one, and the chain one does not count. We're then going to work a slip stitch into the next stitch. So we insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, straight through the loop on our hook. Don't let these get too small because we have to work back into them on the way back. Into the next stitch, we're going to be working another berry. So we yarn over, insert, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over to pull through just that first loop. We yarn over, reinsert our hook to the same stitch, yarn over, bring a fifth loop up, yarn over, just pull through that first loop. Still got five on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops. And I caught something. There we go. We then close that with a chain one before slip stitching into the next. 
Let's make another berry together. So we yarn over, insert, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through just that first loop, yarn over again, reinsert into that same stitch, bring a fifth loop up, yarn over, pull through that first loop, before finally yarning over, pull through all five and close with a chain one. We're gonna repeat this all the way down, working a slip stitch followed by a berry stitch all the way to our last stitch. So you'll finish working your last berry stitch and have one stitch remaining. And I'm gonna meet you there because we're gonna not work a slip stitch into our final stitch because to me, that just makes things far too difficult. So I'll meet you when you have just one stitch remaining, ready to work your final stitch of row two. So I've just worked my last berry stitch and I have one stitch remaining. And into this last stitch, we're going to work a single crochet. It's a bit twiddly. <laughs> At the end of row two, when you turn it around, you should have a total of 11 berry stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. In between each of those berry stitches, you should have a slip stitch, which will give you 10. And then you have one single crochet at the end of the rows. Going straight into row three, we begin with a turning chain of one, and then we're going to work one single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one. Now, if you turn it so you can see the top, it still looks complicated, but this stitch here is our chain one, and we're going to skip those. We don't work into them because they don't count as a stitch. And this big stitch here is the top of our berry stitch. And next to it is the slip stitch from the previous row. Working the whole way across, we're gonna skip the chain ones, working a slip stitch into the top of our berry stitches, and then working a single crochet into the top of our slip stitches. So we skip our chain one, insert our hook into the top of our berries to work a slip stitch. And then this tiny stitch in between, yours may not be quite as small as mine, is our slip stitch from the previous row. I'm gonna push my hook on and work a single crochet into there. We skip the chain one, working a slip stitch into the top of our berry, so it's a little bit further across, and we just slip stitch. There's our slip stitch from our previous row, just here, right in between those berries, and in that stitch, we're going to work a single crochet. I'm gonna to continue to repeat this all the way across, skipping the chain one into that slip stitch, kind of into that top of the berry stitch just behind it. We work a slip stitch, and then we work a single crochet into the slip stitch from the previous row, which is almost in between those berries. So continue to repeat that across and I will meet you for our final stitch at the end of row two, three, sorry. So I've just worked my final slip stitch into the top of my berry stitch. I have one stitch remaining and we're just going to work a single crochet into the top of that last stitch. A bit of a pull to stop it from twiddling around too much. So at the end of row three, you should have 12 single crochets one at each end and then one in between each berry and should then have 11 slip stitches as well. Going straight into row four, I've made my chain one so that we can turn and then we're kind of repeating our berry row, but to make them offset, we're going to work one single crochet into the same as our chain one. We're then gonna work a slip stitch into the next stitch. We're then going to yarn over, ready to work a berry stitch into the next. So we yarn over, insert, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, insert again into the same stitch, bring that fifth loop up, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all five, and finish with that chain one. We're gonna then slip stitch again before continuing to repeat that berry stitch into the next. So we bury into the next stitch. Remember to do that chain one to close it. 
So keep working across, repeating that slip stitch followed by your berry stitch and I will meet you when you have just one stitch remaining to work our final stitch together. So I've just worked my last berry, I've got two stitches remaining, so I'm slip stitching into the next before that final stitch where we're working one single crochet. So now you've got two rows of berry stitches and they are slightly offset from each other to give us extra texture. So going straight into row five, we're making our turning chain of one and we work one single crochet to the same stitch as our chain one. We've got that slip stitch there from the previous row. So we're going to be working a single crochet into that one. And then we wanna skip that chain one, but close that berry stitch and we're going to slip stitch into the top of the berry stitch. And of course, we've got the slip stitch in between. So we work a single crochet into there. We skip the chain one, find the top of our berry stitch to work a slip stitch. And then we work a single crochet into the top of our slip stitch. Just continue to repeat that all the way across, skipping the chain one, working a slip stitch into the top of your berry stitch like that, and a single crochet into the top of the slip stitch from the previous row. Continue to work across and I will meet you for our last two stitches. So I've just slip stitched into the top of that last berry stitch there and we're going to be working one single crochet into each of the last two stitches. So at the end of row five, you should have a stitch count of 14 single crochets. You've got one, two here and one there. And then of course we have single crochets in between each of the berries. So for row six and seven, we're going to start with a turning chain of one and we're gonna be working one US half double crochet, the same as a UK half treble crochet, into each stitch across. So we yarn over, insert, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through all three, and we're working one half double crochet into each stitch across. And we're repeating that for two rows in total, so row six and seven. So work those two rows, and I will meet you for rows eight and nine. So at the end of row seven, you can still have a stitch count of 23. Just this, those last two rows were 23 half double crochets. So for rows eight and nine, we make a turning chain of one, and we're going to be working one single crochet into the same and each stitch across. So at the end of row eight and nine, you should still have a stitch count of 23, and you'll have a total row count of nine. Go ahead and work those next two rows and I will meet you back to go through the repeats for your front panel. So at the end of row nine, you should be looking something like this. And at this point, we are ready to talk about the repeats we need to achieve the height for the lower front panel of our hot water bottle cover. So we've worked rows one to nine and our pattern repeat is gonna start from row two, which was our first bobble row. And you're gonna be repeating rows two to nine twice more. You're going to end your final repeat one row early, so you only work one row of your single crochets. In the chapters, you'll find the different rows there, so you can refer back to them to get those next two repeats done. Once you've worked those two further repeats, obviously that final row, you're only ending on row eight. So you just have one final row of single crochets. This little portion is gonna be covered by the top panel of our hot water bottle cover. Go ahead and get those ends woven in. And then I'm gonna tell you about our back panel. Now, of course, our back panel is fairly similar to our front panel. And in fact, it's almost exactly the same apart from the number of repeats that we need to do. So you can follow along using the same chapters once again for rows one through to nine. You're gonna be repeating rows two to nine three times. So one more time than we have for our front panel, except you're going to end your final repeat on a repeat of row seven, which is the half double crochet row. So you'll work rows one to nine, then two to nine, two to nine, two to seven. So you just finish two rows early for your back panel. 
So go ahead and get that back panel made and I will meet you for the front top panel before we join them all together and add our ribbing. So for the top front panel of our hot water bottle, we're going to start once again with a chain of 24. That was one, two, three, Slightly different for this, we're going to start by yarning over, ready to work into that second chain from hook. So there's our first chain, there's our second, and we're just going to yarn over, insert our hook into the top part of our first chain, yarn over, pull through, and we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops to work a half double crochet. We're going to work a half double crochet into each chain across to the end of the row, and I will meet you there. Your stitch count at the end of row one should be 23 half double crochets. At the end of row one, you should have a stitch count of 23 half double crochets. And we are gonna go straight into row two. We're going to make our turning chain of one. And for rows two and three, we're going to be working one single crochet into the same as our chain one and each stitch across. Your stitch count will remain the same at 23 single crochets for both rows and I will meet you at the end of row three. So at the end of row three you should still have a stitch count of 23 and we're going to go straight into row four with our turning chain of one ready to work our berry stitches. Now this part of the pattern is actually worked from top down so instead of repeating the pattern as we did before going to work it back to front in some respects. We're going to start by working one single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one and then we're going to work a slip stitch into the next. Then we can start our berry stitches. So we yarn over, insert, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, reinsert, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all five. Close with that chain one, ready to slip stitch, into that next stitch. Good, so repeat that all the way across until you have two stitches remaining and I will meet you there. So once we've worked that final berry stitch and we have two stitches remaining, we slip stitch into the next and of course work a final single crochet into our last stitch. So there we are, our bobble stitches are on the right side. For row five, we make our turning chain of one we work our first single crochet into the top of the same stitch and that is a slip stitch from the previous row. So we're going to work a single crochet into that one. We're going to skip over that chain one ready to work into the top of our berry stitch which is just to the side and we slip stitch there. We're single crocheting in the top of the slip stitch from the previous row, skip the chain one, insert your hook into the top of the berry stitch to work a slip stitch, just as you were doing before. So continue to repeat that all the way across and I will meet you ready for our final stitch. That's actually our final two stitches because I've just slip stitched into that last berry stitch. We're working one single crochet into the next two stitches. So at the end of row five, you will have two single crochets at each end, plus one single crochet in, in between each of the berry stitches. And of course, you're gonna have 10 slip stitches as well. Let's go straight into row six, and we're gonna start with our turning chain of one. We're going to work one single crochet into the same stitch as our chain one, ready to work a berry stitch into the next. Yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, just pull through that first one, yarn over, reinsert, yarn over, pull through that first one again, pull through five and chain one. We're then going to work a slip stitch into the next, just as we have been before. So we're going to repeat that all the way across to our last stitch, working one berry stitch followed by our slip stitch. Don't forget to close with your chain one and I'll meet you for our final stitch. So I've worked my final berry stitch for this row and we just need to work one single crochet into that final stitch. And we have another pair of offset berry stitches or uneven berry stitches. Let's go straight into row seven with a chain of one. 
we're going to be working one single crochet into the top of that same stitch. We skip the chain one and we're going to slip stitch into the top of the berry from the previous row. And yes, we are going to work a single crochet into between those two berry stitches. So we're slip stitching into the top of our berry, single crocheting into the slip stitch from the previous row, skipping that chain one in between. So go ahead and complete row seven and I'll meet you once you've done all your slip stitching and single crocheting across. Just working a single crochet into, into my final stitch to complete row seven. And there's just two more rows to go for this section. We're going to make a turning chain of one and for rows eight and nine, we're going to be working one half double crochet into each stitch across. So that's where we yarn over and have three loops on our hook. So go ahead and work your final two rows. You can then fasten off, gather all your panels. So your front, your lower front panel, your back panel, and of course, this finished uh, top front panel or upper front, I'm not sure what I called it. And we are going to get ready to join those together. And then of course, we're going to be adding our ribbing right at the very end. You don't have to add that in, but it does give a really nice finish to your hot water bottle cover. I will see you in a few moments once you've finished this section. So two more rows of half double crochet with a turning chain of one, and I will see you shortly. So once you've completed all three panels, we're going to put them together in the way that they're going to be joined. Now that's upside down, that's upside down, that was clever. So you should have your bobbles at the bottom and no bobbles at the top. And then to work out the top of the top panel, look for where your starting chain was. So you have proper stitches on one end and no stitches on the other. I'm going to flip the back panel over so that the right side is at the bottom and the wrong side is facing. And then I'm going to place my top panel in line or my lower front panel in line there. And then the top panel kind of fits on top of there. Now you might want to grab some stitch markers And you can use, kind of pin the corners together initially, or the top stitches of each of the panels together. Lockable if you've got them, but you don't have to. And just work your way around, securing all of those. And the most important bit is, I'm going to get a lockable pin for these ones, is that these should overlap. You can use your bobble stitches as a guide. So you've got a bobble row here. You want the same bobble row underneath. And I'm just going to secure there just for my own safety. So that, that one's in place. And then we know where we're going to overlap because we're going to work through these stitches so they all are joined together. So I'm just going to pin a bigger one than that. Let's find a lockable one. I'm going to go through the back panel, through the front lower and the front upper, and then we've got a couple of stitches that we're going to seal all together as well. And repeat that for the other side, making sure that everything is secure and then we're ready to get joining. So the last thing we need to do is to pin the top panel to the back panel. And to do that, we're going to count six stitches in on both sides and pin those together. So we've got number one marked, two, three, four, five, and that's number six. So I'm going through the wrong side of my chain and through to the back panel. And then we're doing the same counting in from the other side. This is going to be the open section at the top and that's where we're going to work our ribbing. So we've got our bottom corners, I've got that midway point for those bobble rows on both sides. I've pinned together the edges and then I've pinned the top corners and six stitches in 
from each side. I'm going to bring in my yarn because we're going to join with the right side facing so that we can work all the way down the side, along the bottom and all the way up back to this stitch here. So before I take my marker out, I like to shove my hook through so it's in place. I've got the right side facing with the opening closest. I'm going to remove my first stitch marker. Just going to place my yarn over, bring my yarn through to join and then make a little chain one. We're going to work through both sides of our panel. I'm going to work over my end because I don't want any to do any more weaving in. We're going to start with working one single crochet into each stitch across, making sure that I'm working through the same stitch on each panel. We're just working a single crochet into each. Inserting, I split the yarn there, that's annoying. So through, through, my corner's come undone, that's fun. Let's take that out, because I know where my corner is. Got one more, another one. Sorry, excuse my tail. I told you I got bored of weaving my ends in. I'm gonna tuck that end in there for now, sort that out later. And I've got Final one to work through on both sides. And we're going to rotate, ready to work down the next side. So we're working through the same row ends on each panel. And you can use your bobble rows as a guide throughout this. We're just working one single crochet into each row end. It's a little bit, sorry, I've got the camera in the way, so I look a bit awkward. And I'm keeping an eye on where this extra bit is because I want to make sure at that point we work through all three layers. So my last bobble, last bobble row, this is working out well. I'm inserting my hook into this layer. I want to pick up, a bit awkward, that layer in between, so there's the stitch, if you can see what I'm doing, probably not. And then through out the back of the back panel as well. And then we're going to work where our marker is, which is through the bottom and through all three layers. So it looks like a big clump, but your single crochet will just sit on the front there. And then from inside, you've secured that bit there as well. So I can remove this marker. And we're just going to continue all the way down to the end. So continue along. I'll meet you when you reach this corner to work back along this side. So I've worked all the way down the first side and I've reached my next stitch marker. So I'm just going to remove that out of the way. Ready to work through both corners with another single crochet. I'm going to continue to work all the way around. Oh, that stitch mark is still there. Working through the wrong side of our chain or the other side of our chain and through the other side of our panel, all the way back up the side. Take care to make sure you reach and hit all three bits of your panel here. I'm going to meet you back up in this top corner. So I'm just working my last few stitches back to the top or the final top stitch marker. Let me know how your join has gone in the comments because it's quite good fun this. I found it, I like, I do like joining pieces together. I know it's not everyone's idea of fun, but I really like it. That's me back. So I'm going to remove my final stitch marker. We are not fastening off. Do not gab those scissors. Just going to tuck that end in down the middle for a moment. And it, we should be sealed at both sides all the way through nice and securely and have a beautiful edging to 
the top of our hot water bottle. Now you don't have to do this next section, you can just have the top of your bottle coming out, but why would you? Let's give this the perfect finish. So for our ribbing, we're only gonna be working in one side and we're working around, but we're gonna add our ribbing on vertically, if that makes sense. We're gonna start working right where we are, working one round of single crochets and decreases around. So we're gonna start by in, into the next stitch, we're going to work one single crochet. We then work a single crochet, two together. So we insert, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through all three. I'm gonna repeat this around, working one single crochet into the next, followed by a single crochet, two together across the next two stitches. So yarn over, bring up, insert into the next stitch along, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through all three. I'm just gonna repeat that all the way around. So working one single crochet, followed by a single crochet decrease. You have to kind of rotate as you go around. Just decrease across these next two. And then we rotate to work along the back of our hot water bottle cover. A single crochet, single crochet two together. crochet, single crochet two together. I'm going to work my last decrease just over the top into that last stitch that we worked and there we are. We're then going to slip stitch into that first stitch that we made and that just brings in the neck of our bottle opener, our bottle opener, that just brings in the neck of our hot water bottle cover so that it's a little bit tighter and not too flappy around that top there. Now we're gonna be working in rows to create our ribbing and we're gonna work our rows backwards and forwards. So we start by making a chain of nine. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, if you are making this for a particular hot water bottle cover, you might want to check how tall your ribbing is. This is perfect for my hot water bottle cover. Some have shorter necks or longer necks. So double check that this length covers the neck of your hot water bottle cover. It's not too essential. We're then going to work one single crochet into each chain across, starting from that second chain. So there's number one, it's already disappeared. We're just going to insert and work one single crochet into each chain back down to the hot water bottle cover. We then slip stitch to the next stitch of the hot water bottle cover. So our chain is coming out of this one here where we joined. So we slip stitch to the next and then we have to turn and we're ready to work back up. We're not making a turning chain or anything like that. We just have to kind of move our yarn out of the way. And we're going to be working, she says, I might just bring it around so it's out of the way from your point of view. So we're gonna be working into these back loops. So that's our slip stitch. We're ignoring that because we need eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's number eight. So that's our slip stitch, we're ignoring that. So we're inserting our hook under the back loop. The front loop is the one closest, the back loop is further away. Just insert the hook and work your next single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So when we reach this final one, we're going to be working a single crochet into the last because it gives us a really neat edge. I'm going to make our chain of one, rotate again, that's the equivalent of turning, and then we're just going to work back down again. So ignore your chain one, we're working into the, um, 
into the back loop only of the next eight stitches. So that's one, two, And eight brings us back to our project. We're then going to slip stitch to the next stitch. We can then, I'm gonna turn it this way this time so my yarn's in the right place. And then we're just gonna do the same. We're gonna repeat these two rows. So with this row we work, let me tighten that up. For this row we work one single crochet into each of the next seven in working in that back loop only. And then we work one final single crochet through both loops to help keep that edge really nice and tidy. And then we rotate, ready to work back down, working eight single crochets into each. So this is not a tight ribbing, it's designed to flare out because most bottles flare out. So we're not decreasing in this ribbing, we're just working up and down so we work into that back loop only, but then when we come back up, we only work seven into the back loop and work a single crochet into the top stitch, just so it gives us a neater edge. So continue to repeat that all the way around until you have no stitches left. And then we'll join our final round of ribbing to the first row that we made. And that will complete our hot water bottle. I'll see you shortly. So I have reached back around to the other side of my ribbing and all that's left to do is to join these two together. So I've made a chain one, I'm going to insert my hook through the last row that I've worked and through the beginning chain of our ribbing and I'm just going to repeat that all the way down, working one single crochet into each and that will join our last row. You can't even see what I'm doing, I'm sorry. It's so warm where I'm sat right now. So my yarn is squeaking, which I cannot stand that noise. It's just simply hot me, I'm afraid. Two more. And then that's it. I'm, I, my hot water bottle is hidden upstairs. I'm not going to grab it, it is too warm. You're going to have to pretend I will insert a photo for you. Where's that last one? It's hiding from me. There it is. I'm not going to make a chain one because I'm going to weave this in very well. Just going to fasten off to join. And there we have our completed ribbing. So it's nice and stretchy so that the neck of your hot water bottle can go in. But you can insert your hot water bottle from here and then fill it up from the top without having to remove it. And this is why this will always be my favourite bobbly hot water bottle cover. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to give this tutorial a thumbs up. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed and I will see you in the next video.